The Samsung Galaxy S21 is coming with insane cameras and hardware, and I'll be sharing the details right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links in the description. So this week we've had a couple of big leaks around the Galaxy S21 and it looks incredible. We've got some insane cameras with new technology on both the front and the rear and news of just how powerful the Galaxy S21 is going to be. Before we get started though, give this video a like if you're looking forward to the Galaxy S21 and let me know in the comments if it's it's the S21 you're waiting for, or is it another phone altogether? So the Samsung Galaxy S21 is going to be one of the most anticipated phones of next year and we're already getting an insight into the design and the specifications. And the first bit of news we have for you today is on the rear cameras of the S21. Some of you may have heard rumours of a 600 megapixel camera or even their 250 megapixel sensor that they're working on being in the Galaxy S21. Truth is, while they are working on these mobile sensors, they're not for the Galaxy S21 and they simply won't be ready in time. There is however news that Samsung are going to be using a 150 megapixel sensor on the Galaxy S21 and that's a much more realistic spec. Its predecessor came packed with an impressive 108 megapixel isocell sensor that used pixel binning technology to perform well in all lighting conditions. Unfortunately there were initial issues with its autofocus which severely harmed its reputation and that's something that Samsung want to work on for the Galaxy S21. The biggest change we're reportedly going to see is that Samsung will be implementing their 150 megapixel isocell sensor in the Galaxy S21 and they're also going to be dropping the laser autofocus. The 150 megapixel non-acell sensor is reportedly going to be mass produced at the end of this year which of course means it's perfect timing to be included in the Galaxy S21. The largest Galaxy S21 Ultra model is going to be using a pentacamera setup so we can expect another photography powerhouse from Samsung. The 150 megapixel sensor is going to be coupled with a 64 megapixel telephoto, a 16 megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel macro and a 3D time of flight depth sensor. Unfortunately at this moment in time we don't know what exact sensors are being used or what level of zoom the telephoto will provide. When it comes to the front camera of the Galaxy S21, we've got news that not only could it be the first under display camera from Samsung, but we could be seeing a bigger sensor than normal along with optical image stabilization. We've been hearing news of under display selfie cameras for a while, and while other companies have showed us these in action, Samsung have kept things very quiet. The Galaxy S21 seems like a very likely time for the release of the in-display selfie camera and reputable leaker Ice Universe has already advised us that it's going to be the likely candidate for the debut. Samsung are reportedly working on two prototypes of the Samsung Galaxy S21 and according to a leak one of them will have a half inch sensor and the other is going to be a 1 over 2.55 inch sensor but the megapixel counts have not been confirmed. These new sensors are reportedly also getting optical image stabilization to provide us with shake free photos and videos from the selfie camera and if they're able to implement this at the same time as the in display cameras then it's going to be very impressive. And finally we've got details leaked for the system on chips that power the Galaxy S21 and both of them are incredible. As most of you Samsung fans will know the Galaxy S21 is going to have the Snapdragon 875 in certain markets and use its Exynos chip globally. The Snapdragon 875 is going to be manufactured using 5 nanometer lithography which is a huge improvement over the 7 nanometer 865. This change is going to bring better performance and efficiency to the Galaxy S21. We've also got the inclusion of the X60 modem for 5G connectivity and the Adreno 660 GPU. For those interested it's going to be using the Spectra 580 image processing engine, the Adreno 665 VPU and support millimeter wave and sub 6 gigahertz bands. 
For everyone else in the Exynos territories, consumers are normally disappointed with a worse performing chipset, but this year we could see a change. As some of you may already know, Samsung ditched their custom CPU division and instead turned to AMD. The new chipset is expected to be called the Exynos 1000 and it's reportedly going to be the first collaboration from Samsung and AMD. And we've already had the first benchmark of the custom Radeon GPU expected to be used in this system on chip. The Adreno CPU in the Snapdragon always outperforms the Mali in the Exynos, but this new custom Radeon GPU has actually surpassed the Adreno 650 by 13%. It's important to remember that this is an early version of the GPU, so we do expect final results to be higher, but it's great news for Samsung fans globally. Many have been speculating that this chipset may be available for the Note 20, but that phone will most likely be using the Exynos 992. When it comes to the actual design of the Samsung Galaxy S21, the truth is it really doesn't matter too much right now. While there may be a design in mind and a prototype already out there at Samsung, it won't have been finalized just yet, so it could of course still change. We can however get information on hardware and specs that are unlikely to change. The first actual leak we have comes from well-known leaker Ice Universe, and he published a tweet last week to say that Samsung is considering an in-display camera sensor on the Samsung Galaxy S21. He advises that they're evaluating the feasibility of the technology, and if it's ready, then it will be in the Galaxy S21. Everyone has been very excited for this new technology and it's always been expected that 2021 is going to be the year it's delivered. We can finally have a full screen display without motorized parts and the only thing that people are worried about is the additional cost that it might bring. We've also got reports suggesting that this in-display selfie camera is going to be using a half inch selfie sensor with a 48 megapixel resolution. The Samsung Galaxy S21 will of course be using the new and improved next generation OLED display. We've had patents filed for curved displays with protruding buttons, and we've now got a new patent showcasing a very curved display. The patent was discovered by Let's Go Digital and it was rendered by Concept Creator. It shows a display that's not only curved at both edges, but it also has curves at the top and the bottom. While it does look similar to the new design from Huawei, it's actually very different as Huawei's is just the glass and not the display itself. The patent is for the screen to curve on all edges and it includes the rounded off corners. Now we know it is intended for a Galaxy as it was listed as a Galaxy smartphone display and it's also logged as that on the World Intellectual Property Office database. Its full screen design means that it will of course have an in-display fingerprint scanner and it helps fuels reports that the in-display selfie camera will be there as well. Some people are speculating that this is of course for the Note 20 but many believe it's for the Galaxy S21. Next we've got news of an incredible 150 megapixel nanocell camera to debut in the Galaxy S21. They already broke records with their latest 108 megapixel sensor that we saw in the S20 Ultra and now they're pushing the boundaries even further. The new 150 megapixel camera is going to be launching towards the end of this year which will most likely be too late for the Note range and this means that we could well have it debuting in the Galaxy S21. We also had patents filed by Samsung for multiple technologies that could also be present in the Galaxy S21. We had a patent for a holographic projector to produce stereoscopic images in the air, almost like a 3D hologram. While it could be a cool feature, I think it's just too gimmicky and not something we'll see in the S21. We also had patents filed for a lot of sensors that were initially thought to be in the Galaxy Note 20, but they are now looking very unlikely. This means if they are to go ahead with these plans, then we could well see them in the S21 instead. First we've got mention of an electromyography or EMG sensor. Now EMG is used to measure electrical signals generated by muscles and can be used to assess the health of a muscle and the nerve cells that control them. We also have mention of an electroencephalogram sensor or EEG sensor. This is again to measure electrical signals but instead of muscles EEG sensors are for measuring our brain activity. Finally we have the electrocardiogram or ECG sensor and this measures electrical activity of the heart and help diagnose abnormal heart rhythms. 
While we always get many patents filed which do fuel rumours of new features, I believe if any are to be true then it's going to be the new sensors that we see in the S21. While a holographic projector would be an incredible feature, it would be very limited in its use and not something I can see them doing. Fitness and health are very popular at the moment and used commonly in today's smartphone peripherals so I think this would be a great fit for the S21. Now of course all of that is estimation and speculation from patents, Samsung file a lot of patents to protect their ideas and it doesn't mean it's definitely going to be happening. One thing we can be certain of though is that the Galaxy S21 is of course going to come in a few different sizes to suit all consumers, it's going to have the latest Samsung display along with the best hardware and cameras they can source at the time. Going by the current releases we can expect them to stick with the rectangular shaped camera module on the rear and they're going to provide 3-6 to six cameras depending on variants. When it comes to the chipset they'll of course be using the Snapdragon 875 which is a 5 nanometer system on chip, it's going to provide better performance and efficiency over the current chipsets used and unfortunately as usual this is only going to be for certain regions including North America and for most markets globally we'll be getting the equivalent Exynos chip that doesn't actually perform as well. We'll likely get the usual choices of 128, 256 or 512 internal storage and this will of course be UFS 3.1. When it comes to RAM we'll likely be getting a choice of 12 or 16 gigs of RAM which is still more than we're ever going to need. There will likely be a hybrid SIM tray to support micro SD cards but there won't be a 3.5mm audio jack. It's going to have all of the usual sensors and we can of course expect an in-display fingerprint scanner. Until the design and the screen sizes are finalised, we unfortunately can't estimate the battery capacity but expect slight improvements on the predecessors and of course wireless and reverse wireless charging. As always it's going to be IP68 water resistant and when it comes to price it's no doubt going to be expensive. Samsung surprised us with just how high the Galaxy S20 Ultra launched at so it's going to be interesting to see if they create another very premium device or work at bringing this cost down. Of course there's unfortunately a lot of speculation right now but as soon as we receive any solid leaks I'll be sharing them with you guys straight away. As always though I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments, who out there is waiting for the Samsung Galaxy S21 and which model are you waiting for. But thanks for watching the video, if you liked it smash a thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.